And once you played with uh, the Brotherhood for the first time, in that kind of informal setting, uh, did that lead to any more gigs or? Yes, it did. Yeah. So you replaced someone? No. 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 Yeah, that's the, the beauty of it. Yeah. That's that's the real beauty of it. I wasn't out for anyone's gig. Mm -hmm. Not at all. I wanted to try and add something to that in my arrogant 21-year-old kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what Elton used to tease me about. Mm -hmm. You pushy yank. He would say, <laughs> no one here would ever do that. You know, only you yanks. <laughs> it was so funny. So your perspective is probably unique in that respect. I mean, your view of, of what the scene was like, because you yourself was, oh, yeah. was an odd one out, kind of. Uh, y yes, yes. I was a newcomer. I was a new yeah. kid. I'm Not a very around. green, you know. But, but I really had the, the urge to want to merge and play, mm. you know. Really wanted to play, I think that's, that's the bottom line. And I know I had a bit, you know, but I knew I loved this music, you know, that's, that's the most important. I think maybe that's what Chris saw, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, he didn't say, <laughs> I think Keith Tippy put it once about dream time. I didn't ask to be in the band and they didn't say no. <laughs> Yeah, it was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't so much that Chris started to, after a while, write out parts for me. Mm -hmm. This is Jim's part. This isn't any of the others. Yeah. You know, and he put the name on it. He, I noticed that over the years he would do that. He put your name on. It. He wouldn't put trumpet three, four in B flat or something. No, he put Jim. You know. And any in any case, that 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 was. You know, a, a, a big boost for, for me. Before I knew it, um, Keith Lippett was doing the same. I'd go in, down 100 Club and listen and say, oh yeah. They say, oh yeah, it's Jim. He, he sometimes sits in with Brotherhood, you know. And um, okay, you want to sit in? Mongezi can't make it, you know. Go ahead, sit in, you know. Again, it, it, it was fine. I was getting the best experience I could possibly want at the time by players who had really been doing it for quite some time. Matter of fact, I call it a baptism of fire. Because you had to, uh, yeah, you had to re really work hard. But that was what it was about. What kind of places did you play with these bands? Was it mostly London clubs or did yes. you begin traveling as well to Europe? I did travel with Brotherhood, yes. Mm -hmm. they, Hazelwood booked me and says, can you make this? You know, and all of a sudden I found myself <coughs> uh, doing tours over in three gig, four gig tours, say in Germany or, or, or France and Holland. Sometimes to Switzerland. And was it a whole adventure moving this kind of big band around? What were the traveling and lodging conditions? Um, van. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's how I come to know all the... Because <laughs> the, hey. the games that were being played, it's, it's sometimes funny, sometimes vicious. <laughs> and, uh, but it was all a learning, learning curve for me. I was always protected somehow. Mongs took me in. Mm -hmm. Mongezi. Yeah. And, and, and if they were giving me a hard time, he would, he would stand up for me. He was so he was beautiful. Mm. Yeah, small guy. But very, Short. very, very powerful. Mm. And I always, looked, I always looked up to him. However you can. Uh, you know, I'd have to get down here. But, but I mean, really, really, what a player. Mm. What a player. And Harry Beckett and Mark. No, oh, come on. I knew I was in, in exalted company at the time. What are your, your most vibrant memories of, of playing on stage with this band? What, what was special about it? When they would rock the 100 Club with a packed house, mostly of South African people, and to see people dancing and really enjoying themselves and, and hooping and whooping, really getting an idea that if I can't go to Africa, Africa has come to me. That is probably succinctly the experience that I'm going on. Wow. You know, and because the band really, really, really played powerfully at, at 100 Club somehow. Even though it was, wasn't the greatest place to play because of the stage, it was long and everyone had to line up like this. You couldn't lay it backwards. Mm -hmm. You had to line up like this. 
a, a mixing person's nightmare. And for me, Chris's famous kind of uh, utterances, when backstage he would be interviewed and they said, Chris, uh, they can't hear the piano. Well, if they can't hear the piano, they'd have to come closer. <laughs> Nobody was into PAs. He knew that it was, could only go so far. But we could hear him. And, and if, that, if that was the case, Lewis would come, come down. Um, Harry Miller didn't really alter his sound all that much, so the bass would always come through. The rhythm, the rhythm you can always feel it through the floor. Death. Um, although it was a shame sometimes you couldn't hear piano. Nonetheless, that, that band knew the music inside out. Well, like I would, some people ask me what was it like rehearsing, you know, with a band like that. Well, sometimes two to three hours rehearsal, all in one. It sounds like not so much, but that was one tune. <laughs> so of course you're going to learn it, but you know, you're going to learn it, it goes right here. And um, not only that, you get a peek into Dudu and Mongezi, how they learned. Dudu with tonic so far, and Mon Mongs would just memorize everyone's part. Okay. That is, everyone. So if somebody couldn't make it, he'd play the saxophone part. Blow us some more. He blew our minds all the time. An orchestral mind. Yes, he, mm. he would just quietly clock every, every, what everyone was doing. If not, he would go over and have a, have a look. But he knew, he knew the parts. So I was learning so much about what, what makes this band tick like that. Everyone kind of goes for the craziness of it all. And what goes on in the shenanigans in the, in the band room and whatnot. But boy, that band swung. Mm -hmm. And people were really, really hooked into the music. And it was before I arrived. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I noticed it was the band was already up and away, and they had the, the basics. But I came in. There was some some more music being produced, and I was in on some of that. Mm -hmm. Up until about 1975. Yeah. 